welcome to Sacred Scriptures with Sarah. I'm Sarah Wilder, your host, and today we're going to be talking about the authors of both scripture and this blog. So, me. So I guess we can start out a little bit with me. I'm from Faribault, Minnesota. I grew up there going to Catholic school my whole life, and when I was 12, I encountered the Lord, Jesus, in like a very real way, um, and started to pray every day. And at first I was praying with scripture every day, which is super awesome. And that th the way that I prayed changed a lot throughout my life. Um, but starting in seventh grade is really when Jesus became my best friend, my closest companion. Um, and dialoguing with him every day was really important to me. Then when I became a missionary with Net Ministries, I was encouraged again to pray every day with scripture um, and to deepen that style of prayer and I just like felt more and more in love with the Lord and with what he has to say through um, the Bible, the Word of God. Um, and now I go to Benedictine College and I'm studying theology, um, evangelization and catechesis, and then I'm hoping to teach theology someday at a Catholic middle school um, or work for a nonprofit organization. At Benedictine College I'm also very involved with this ministry called St. Paul's Outreach, which is um, a missionary organization. So we have missionaries stationed here at Benedictine College, and I work closely with them to grow in my faith and also to bring other people closer to Jesus. Um, and that's really, really awesome. So it's a little bit more about me, um, the author of this blog. And now I want to talk a little bit about the author of this book, um, God. And kind of super brief overview, I see really three parts to the, the Bible, um, which each one lines up with one of the three members of the Trinity, because our God is Trinity. He's three in one. So there's one God, but three persons in that one substance of God. So the Old Testament, um, the story from the very first man, Adam, through the building of this tribe and this nation, Israel, um, all the way down to the time of Jesus, that section of the Bible, the Old Testament, is really about learning who God is, the Father, creator, um, giver of life, and his faithfulness to his people that he has chosen, because God is faithful. Then the next chunk, the Gospels, is all about the life of Jesus. And like I said in our first episode, Jesus is the Word of God. He's what God wanted to say about himself, the self-expression of God. And so he actually came into creation, became a man, so that we could learn more about God and actually enter into a relationship with God. And then the last part of the Bible is the epistles, the Acts of the Apostles, and Revelation. And... Those are about um, the Christian life and the early church, um, which is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So after Jesus gave himself totally to us, died for our sins and redeemed us to new life, he sent the Holy Spirit to give us abundant life. And the um, second part of the New Testament is all about the early church, discovering what that new life is all about. Um, and the apostles going out on mission, writing to different parishes to explain the life that we have in Christ. So we have the Old Testament about the Father's love for us and his faithfulness, the Gospels about Jesus and his um, self-sacrificing love for us, and then the, new, the epistles, the letters from our apostles, and the Acts of the Apostles, which teach us and explain to us um, how we can be good Christians and how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's a little bit about God, the author of this book, um, and a little bit about what I think he was trying to say when he was writing it. Um, but there's also human authors to scripture. Scripture is really unique where there's a divine author and there's human authors. And so I'm hoping to dive more into the Gospels during future series. Um, so I want to explain a little bit about each of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
so that we can kind of understand what they were writing to and their perspective and their intentions. Um, yeah, so the first one I want to talk about is Mark. He wrote the first gospel around 60 or 70 AD, so about 40 years after Jesus died. And 30 or 40 years. Um, and his is the simplest gospel. He was likely one of the 72 disciples and a friend of Peter. So he traveled with Peter when Peter was on mission. And he established the church in Alexandria, Africa. And so while he was there, he was trying to evangelize um, these Africans who didn't know very much about Judaism or the whole story of Israel or anything like that. So his gospel is very simple, very straightforward to educate the people about the good news of Jesus Christ, as he says. Um, then there's Matthew, who likely came next, and he wrote his um, mostly to the Jews of Jerusalem and Jewish Christians who were hanging on a little too much to the J Jewish traditions and the law. And so his gospel is written to them, and it has a lot of symbolism and um, quotes from the Old Testament brought into the New Testament to show this is the Son of God, this is the Messiah, so that their Jewish mindset, their Jewish perspective can make those connections about who God is. And third is Luke. And Luke's one of my favorites. He um, wasn't Jewish. He was a Gentile, meaning a non-Jew. And he, so he was Greek. And he was um, a follower of Paul, one of the greatest apostles. And he was a doctor. He was very concerned with details. Um, and so much of his gospel is very detailed and explains a lot. And he even said in his introduction that he wrote his gospel to provide an orderly account of what happened with Jesus Christ. So he probably had heard a lot of these stories from all the apostles in the early church, and he was very um, focused on collecting all of these stories, collecting all of these details. A lot of people think he interviewed different apostles and interviewed Mary to learn exactly what had happened. So I find his, his gospel to be a great source of what, what might have actually happened because he's interviewing these firsthand witnesses about what happened throughout Jesus' life. And his gospel is, is written to the Gentiles, to the Greeks, who didn't know a lot about Jewish tradition, um, but were maybe wealthier, more educated. And so his is really focused on encountering Jesus, the person of Jesus, uh, focused on prayer, focused on faith in Jesus and um, who he is. He is the Son of God. And then finally is John. John is my favorite. He is just amazing. So you have the 12 apostles, right? And then within the 12 apostles, you have Jesus' three closest friends, which were um, Peter, James, and John. And John, in his gospel, he often shows the, the inner workings of the life that they had because he was so close to Jesus that he knew all the things going on. He knew Jesus the best out of all of the gospel writers. And so I find his gospel story to reveal um, a side of Jesus that's very intimate. Um, we can really get to know the person of Jesus. He has a lot of symbolism that he likes to tie in from uh, the Old Testament and different things that Jews would pick up on but he is really concerned with helping us to see that Jesus is God and he is the son of God and he knows God and he reveals God to us that he is the word of God, the self-expression of God. Um, and his gospel was written very last and so it has the most developed theology and most developed understanding of Jesus. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about the authors, uh, specifically of the gospels. And I hope in future episodes to talk more about uh, Peter. So the next series I'm hoping to do is to
to dive into Peter and kind of follow along the Gospels through Peter's perspective, the first Pope. So until next time, thanks for watching. Sacred Scriptures with Sarah. I want to see your face. I want to know your heart. I want to walk with you every day of my life, God. Every day of my life.